All right, folks, it's day 30. One more day left in 31 Days of Halloween, and we're finally in the current decade of the 2010s. And uh, today I'm taking a look at a movie that I had absolutely no idea existed until like a couple of weeks back. The fact that this movie exists blows my mind because I don't recall anyone talking about it way back in the day. How this movie eluded me for as long as it did, I don't know, but I got around to watching it. Uh, so, what we're talking about today is, believe it or not, a sequel to The Wicker Man from 1973. I'm not talking about the Nicolas Cage movie. No, we're talking a real, legitimate sequel directed by Robin Hardy, the same guy who did the original 1973 Wicker Man from 2011. It is the strangely unheralded The Wicker Tree. Alright, so first things first. Oh, and another thing, Christopher Lee's in this movie too, so he's coming back reprising his role. Alright, so before we talk about The Wicker Tree, I talk about The Wicker Man, the original one from 1973. Of course, I think it's one of the best horror films ever made. And it's a movie that works because it turns so many ideas on its head. You know, I've always kind of thought it was like a really, like, secretly, like, furtively, like, conservative movie. Because the main character is like a hardline Christian, and he has no time for all the tomfoolery, and he's steadfast with conviction for all the pagans and heathens. And it's a very multi-layered movie. You know, it's a movie uh, about facing modernity. I've always kind of thought it was kind of a metaphor for, uh, you know, regular society fighting the hippies. Again, yeah, that's only my interpretation of Nini. And of course, the music is great, the pacing is great, and it's just a really, really well done movie from start to finish. One of my favorites in the 1970s, for sure. And this movie, directed by Robin Hart, the same guy who made the original, feels so different. Like, it has kind of the same general idea. But here's the thing this movie came out, you know, almost 40 years after the original. Same guy. But you have something different. You have the new camera effects. Uh, you have the new equipment. You have, I, I guess, the new editing software. You have all these new tools. And the pace in this movie feels way, way off. It's nowhere near as solid as the original movie. And I'm wondering if that's because, because of the limitations of the hardware of the 70s, you had to make a different kind of movie. You had to leave stuff out. You had to play down certain things. Whereas with this one, he kind of had carte blanche and whatever he wanted. And the end result is nowhere near as good a movie. Uh, a lot of weird things about this movie is it doesn't really kind of play out as a straight horror film like the original movie did. And in fact, in some ways, this movie kind of almost acts like a parody of The Wicker Man. I know it's kind of weird to say that, but when you watch it, you're like, I think he's kind of just making fun of like the fan following because a lot of pagan hippies really do worship the movie and think of it as like some sort of like, you know, uh, really important text for their neo-paganism. So I think uh, the directors kind of have a little bit of fun with that and playing around with it and making fun of uh, his core audience. But, uh, you know, the thing is, the general idea, same premise in the original movie, except this time you have, like, this uh, gospel-singing chick from Texas and her uh, boyfriend who still haven't done the nasty. And they're going to Scotland as part of some missionary trip and Basically, what the people are doing is the, the town folks, they're all trying to like trick them into having sex with them so they'll get pregnant and they're going to have some fertility ritual. And, uh, I don't know, I can't really say a whole lot more without giving away the big twist ending endings, maybe. But, uh, you kind of know what to expect. So, yeah, the same general plot line as the original movie, except it's not done as well because you don't have that really hardcore lead like you did in the first movie where he's like, this is absolutely shenanigans. It doesn't have the same pacing. The music is nowhere near as good. It doesn't have the same great cinematography because it's all set in modern day. You know, it just comes off as, as a really, really pale imitation of the original. And I was kind of wondered, like, why is it that you have guys who make these really, really great movies way back in the day, and they come back decades later to do these sequels, and they're just completely, like, half-hearted, like, you know, half-assed movies that are nowhere near as good as the original. you got this and The Wicker Man. You've got uh, Blood Feast 2 and the original Blood Feast are night and day. Keep believing they're made of the same guy, but they are. So, I don't know. It's one of those movies where I, I enjoyed it for what it was. It's not going to bore you. You can sit through it. You know, it's it's good for a 90-minute uh, time waster, but nowhere near as good or relevant or impactful as the original movie. So, there's that. Wicker Tree, it exists. Should you see it? Yeah, maybe, kind of, sort of. You know, I wasn't a huge fan, but it wasn't terrible. You can do worse. All right. 
So using our patented tofu dog rating system, I'm going to give this one a, yeah, an all right two and a half tofu dogs out of four. I'm going to be pretty easy on it, because it does have some good parts to it. Pacing's not that bad. It's, it's fairly enjoyable despite its faults. All right. That's it. We're done. We've got one more day. Day 31, Halloween itself for 31 days of Halloween 2017. And for the grand finale, we're going to take a look at a film from 2016, which didn't really kind of get popular until earlier this year. A lot of people are saying it's one of the best horror films in recent memory. There are people puking the aisles when it came out, so I haven't seen it. I'll be checking it out and doing it the review just hours after I watch it for the first time, so it'll be fresh in memory and almost live. So that'll be fun. All right, that's all I've got for you today, kids. As always, enjoy the Halloween season. If you can't do anything else in life, at least you can stay spooky. All right, see you later.